How you doing guys and gals? It's Doug Wilson from Yellow Hawk Customs Outdoors. <laughs> I'm in the shelter right now. This is uh, the Hubba Hubba Fast and Light Shelter. And it's Sunday morning. I was going to do knife reviews today, a couple of them. But uh, it's raining cats and dogs. You can probably hear it. This shelter is... It's incredible, I'm telling you. Um, the tent itself, the whole thing, uh, and it's called the Hubba Hubba by Mountain Safety Research. You can leave the tent part home and just use the fly and the poles, and it's like a lightweight shelter. I tell you, this, this thing is one of the roomiest two-person shelters I've ever been in I mean it is it's palatial the dog's not with me but if she was she'd be over here laying down and you can see how much room is in here um, this the GoPro has a fisheye lens so it's incredible I mean my backpacks over here I got a little chair here I can't sit up in it on the chair but I can you know sit like this right Sit Indian style on the pad, right? It's about 36 degrees outside. It's, it's, it's pretty chilly. So I think what I'm going to do is it's... Um, now what I've done is I've, I've put my pot outside and I catch water in it while it's raining. So I don't have to use the water that's in my bags. But um, I got enough water in my bags right now. In my, uh, in my bladders. So I think what I'm going to do is, we're just going to have a leisurely Sunday morning. I'm going to fix some coffee on the MSR reactor. So, I got my windscreen. I really don't need the windscreen right now. It's not quite cold enough for it. And definitely not windy in here. It is windy and rainy outside. But, I'll tell you what, <laughs> I'm bone dry in here. Bone dry. So... You can see the, the uh, seams of this tent are, are taped. They seam seal and then they tape all the seams on the inside so that there is no leakage. Uh, <clears throat> and I tell you, it, it was raining cats and dogs just a few minutes ago. And it's, I tell you, <laughs> this is one of my best purchases. Now, a lot of tents on the market have this fast and light... Uh, <clears throat> Uh, system to them uh, MSR just happens to be one of them they're all they're all kind of like uh, jumping on the bandwagon so let's <clears throat> see we got my bag here now I could have <coughs> I could have fresh ground coffee right but what I do is I take this MSR coffee thing right uh, let me find my cup. Here's my cup. All right. Don't laugh. I got the purple lid. This is Nadine's lid. I couldn't find my black one. See, this is a Tervis cup. Uh, and uh, basically how I eat in the backcountry is if I'm not like totally bushcrafting and, and cooking on a fire, I bring, you know, what I call the clean cook set, right? I bring the stove and it's pot and... Uh, Whatever it is that I'm eating, if I can't put it in this cup and add water to it, like top ramen or rice or noodles or couscous or whatever, if I can't put it in this cup and add water to it uh, as a meal, I'm talking about meals, I don't bring it. Um, if I have to cook in the pot and dirty it up and have to do dishes and stuff, I, I'm not a dishwasher, right? I, I do it if I have to. But I'd rather things stay clean out here, so that in the morning, you know, if I'm if I'm uh, if I have to wake up and do this damn thing, do 10 miles today or whatever, I can just hit the trail real quick and I don't have to do any dishes. All I do is take some warm water, even cold water, put it in here, swish it out, shake it up, you know, put the lid on it. Shake it up real good, and boom, throw it out, and the thing's clean, ready for the next meal, okay? 
So, Tervis. Tervis. I tell you, I've, I've had a few guys ask me about this cup, and uh, Greg Barr is the most recent one. He just bought one. Um, I like the 16 ounce because, you know, 16 ounces of food pretty much fills me up. You might want to go for the, uh, I don't know, 24 ounce. I think there's a 24 ounce too. I think that's the one that, that Greg Barr got. Um, you can get them in larger sizes to hold more food or more hot beverage or whatever. These are good for hot food or cold beverages or hot beverages, cold food, doesn't matter. Okay, so let's see what we got in our goodie bag. See, these are the, these are the uh, noodles that I eat. These are, uh, they're called Thai Kitchen from Simply Asia. These are rice noodle soups. Uh, they're delicious. A lot of times I'll mix this and some couscous together and that's what I'll eat. That's like my favorite backpacking meal. And then maybe throw some, uh, some, uh, some salmon in there too, salmon steaks. Uh, so there's that, I got that. But right now I'm digging for the coffee. I happen to have one of these at home. This is a Mountain House freeze-dried lasagna. I, I tell you, guys, don't let anybody tell you these things aren't good. They're delicious. Most of the meals in these packages are pretty damn good. They're just expensive. I think this was $5.50, right? Um, and I'm pretty sure this only feeds one person, this one here. But you can buy them now at Walmart for a little bit cheaper, four bucks, three bucks, something like that. Uh, it depends on the meal. Now it's just drizzling. Great, right? It stops. <laughs> I like when it rains. I do. It's just, uh, I like cold, you know, snowy, sometimes rainy. I like that kind of weather. It makes you feel alive out here, you know? It gives you a chance to test your equipment test your metal out here um, this guy right here this is another valuable piece of equipment it's a polar fleece balaclava with a face mask um, you just take it put the face mask up when it's really cold and you cinch these sides down I'll tell you what man you sleep in this thing um, because I mean I sleep in it I wear it in cold weather as well, but you know, you got like 75% of your heat is lost from your neck up. Uh, that's how, you know, that's how you get cold, right? Um, the, you got, your, your head is full of blood vessels more than any other part of your body. It's, you know, you got your carotid arteries, your carotid veins here that, uh, are, you know, closer to the skin and you lose a lot of heat through your neck and your head. So I like to, you know, stay warm and this is a good way of doing it. I watched this, uh, this channel, it's called um, Suge Emery. Uh, it's all one word, Suge Emery. S-H-U-G-E-M-E-R-Y, Suge Emery. This guy is, he is a pro at winter camping he lives like up in michigan or something like that or uh minnesota i think it's minnesota he lives in but uh let me get some let me get some water on real quick so i can uh, let's see where's my I got, I got two bottles of water here i'm gonna find the other one here it is uh these are this is what i usually put water in uh and i tell you usually the bag stays in this okay it protects the plastic right because i tell you these things are very durable but you can put a hole in them if you're not careful um they are extremely durable i've had these things for 10 years going on 10 years i i what i do is i use them for a few years and then i throw them away and buy another one they're not that expensive um so it usually stays in a bag just to keep it scuff resistant um so I'm gonna add some, ooh, I'm gonna add some water here. Uh, a rainy Sunday morning. Alright, I'm gonna put some water in here. There's that. 
I got another two liters over here that I can use for later on. Uh, I, I may be staying here until tomorrow morning. I don't know. We'll see. Uh, if, if I can get out today and do the knife review on this guy here and work a little bit with this guy on the camera. You guys have seen the LMF1. Or actually, it's the LMF now. You guys have seen this knife uh, on film and me using it. And we sell some of them. But I really wanted to wait to actually get these two out on the market. Um, I hate how this thing turns to the side all the time. It's a pain in the ass. Um, I, I, I wanted to wait to get my new uh, BMF. CPM 3V G10 scales with the jig texture liner. Uh, these, um, I mean, uh, scales. These scales, the purchase on this knife, the purchase on most of Mike Wallace's knives is very grippy. Very grippy, but if you work with it for a long time, it's not fatiguing. You know what I mean? I, <laughs> I can't stress it enough. And you know what? Honestly, I don't have any dog in the fight here. I really don't. Uh, Mike Wallace is the one that asked me to put my sheaths on his knives. I didn't go searching him out or anything. So I really don't have a dog in the fight. Um, because even if I didn't have these things made, he would still send me knives to sheath. Matter of fact, most of the knives that he sends me are not my designs. Most of them are Spear 1s, Spear 2s. I get quite a few of these as well, and the Delta Whiskey Backcountry. But I really don't have a dog in the fight here. I don't make any money on this design, right? He makes everything for making the knife, and I make, it from, I make money making the sheath for it. Um, you know, it just... The thing is, is I love his knives. They're tough, Right? They are definitely woods worthy. Um, and I tell you, they're better than most knives that I have in my hand. And, you know, there's a whole lot of reasons for that. But, I mean, look at the workmanship, the craftsmanship on that blade. This is one of the finest looking knives and the toughest that I've ever used. So that's why I stick by Mike Wallace. He's good. And his blades are work in the field under any condition and I tell you what I would put CPM 3V up against any other knife any other steel um, for the most part there's a couple of obscure super steels out there um, that are more expensive that are maybe a little bit better a little bit more edge retention or whatever but CPM 3V is the top, man. Top of the steel chart for building knives. That's just my opinion, right? Some guys like O1, some guys like 1095. I'm a CPM 3V guy because it is a shitload tougher than those other steels. Um, the reason why I'm having the Delta Whiskey Infinity made out of A2 is because, number one, I don't know how popular that blade... I knew these would be popular. I knew the Delta Whiskey Backcountry would be popular. But having Mike Wallace build them, he builds them out of CPM 3V exclusively. So he doesn't even mess with forgeable steels. So there's that, you know. Um, but here it is. You know, here we go. The BMF. All right. So I wanted to do the review of this knife today, but I don't think I'm going to get to it. This is that Athos, or I'm sorry, Arthos. All right, let's get to build, uh, making some coffee here because I got like three minutes on this video. So anyway, I'm going to real careful. You got to be careful with this stove in a in a tent, in a shelter. Now I have the vent open, right? If your tent opens at the top, make sure it's open so that the fumes, you know, the carbon dioxide whisks away. Uh, because you don't want to be falling asleep in here and then dying because of uh, carbon monoxide poisoning. 
All right, so I'm gonna light, light the stove. All right, so basically, let me just, um, and uh, let me reiterate, this is dangerous. Uh, but I've been doing this for a long time. I've never had any mishaps in here. I'm real careful. Um, lighting a stove. Now, now the stove is actually in the vestibule part. That's where the camera's sitting. All the way at the back of the vestibule. So, you know, this shelter, this tarp has two vestibules on either side that go out so you can hold your gear. Uh, so you have a large uh, living space, a sleeping space. But, uh... It is dangerous to do this. The experts, right? The the uh, Backpacker Magazine, all the experts, Chris, Kristen Hostetter and all those guys, they tell you, don't do it, right? But I'm telling you, if you're careful, you can get away with it in inclement weather. Now, it's like still drizzling, I can hear it, but got the stove going. You just gotta be careful, all right? So I'm gonna get ready to have some coffee here. Got my sugar, sugar, and I got a little bit of cream. I like cream and sugar in my coffee. Um, all right, guys. So that's it. I'm gonna have my coffee. I'll see you in the next video. This is Doug Wilson for Yellowhawk Customs Outdoors. It's raining. See ya. <laughs>